hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel from this video onwards i will discuss about embryology so stay tuned with my channel to learn embryology uh, so first i will give you a brief introduction of uh, fertilization then implantation uh, as according to this picture you can see uh, in the first uh, picture you can see the zygote that means a fertilized egg after cleavage in a fertilized egg it becomes eight cell stage, two, four, two cell stage, then four cell stage, then eight cell stage, then finally 16 cell stage and it forms a blastocyst and then this blastocyst is the uh, thing which get implanted in the uterine cavity. After it implanted, it also divides and divides into various uh, cells and cavities and form organ systems in the body. In this video, I will discuss about the gastrulation process. The gastrulation process is the most characteristic event occurring during the third week of gestation. The name gastrulation is given for the process of formation of all three germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm and the endoderm in the embryo. Here you can see uh, the first picture. This is the blastocyst uh, which implanted in the uterine cavity. In the blastocyst, you can see two cell layers, which is the blue color one is the hyperblast and the green color one is the epiblast. Then uh, uh, by further cell division, it uh, forms uh, the bilaminar embryonic disc, uh, which is also consists of hyperblast and the epiblast. You can see it, the further cell division occurs here. And the next process is the gastrulation, which we, which we are going to talk about. This diagram is in the Langmans. Uh, you can see here uh, the blastocyst, which consists of a uh, hyperblast, epiblast, and uh, here you can see the definitive yolk sac. Here is the amniotic cavity, and you can see the placental formation, the initial stages of placental formation, which consist of uh, syncytiotropoblast, cytotropoblast, and here is the extraembryonic mesoderm here the orange color one is the extraembryonic mesoderm here the most important thing is the uh, hypoblast and the epiblast now you know what is hypoblast and what is epiblast and uh, then before gastrulation starts there is formation of primitive streak on the surface of the epiblast here you can see the hyperblast in yellowish color and the bluish color one is the epiblast. You can see the formation of primitive streak on the surface of the epiblast. And initially the streak is vaguely defined uh, but in uh, 15 to 16 day of the embryo it is clearly visible as a narrow groove with si slightly bulging regions on the either side. Uh, when it becomes uh, when it comes to uh, 15 and 16th day this uh, primitive streak becomes more prominent with the with uh, having uh, two lateral edges as well here this end is the cephalic end this end is the cephalic end and the cephalic end of the streak there is a node called primitive node which consists of slightly elevated area uh, which is uh, surrounded by a small primitive pit. Here in this diagram, you can clearly see the uh, primitive node here. This is the uh, primitive streak, which is initially forms. Then primitive node, you can see in the cephalic end. And then cells of the epiblast migrate towards the uh, primitive streak. Cells in the epiblast migrate towards the primitive streak. Upon arrival of the region of the streak, they become flask shape and detach from the epiblast and slip beneath it. This process is called as, this invert movement of cells in the epiblast is called as invagination. You have to remember this name very thoroughly. What is the name? Invagination. Hope this picture is very clear and you can see uh, the primitive streak and the primitive node here. This is the epiblast. You can see the cells in the epiblast coming downwards, coming downwards through the primitive streak. This process is called as the invagination. After the invagination, what happens is some displace the hypoblast. Some cells displace the hypoblast. You can see these cells are displaced. Here, the 
cells in the hypoblast get displaced by the cells coming from upwards for the epiblast and then it forms endoderm the cells displace in the hypoblast and forms the endoderm and the others come to lie in between the epiblast and newly created endoderm and forms the mesoderm in between the epiblast and the hypoblast the cells come and arrange as mesoderm now you have the endoderm then you have the mesoderm then the cells remaining in the epiblast becomes ectoderm therefore the epiblast through the process of gastrulation is the source of all the germ cell layers when more and more cells move between the epiblast and hypoblast layers they begin to spread laterally and cranially and gradually they migrate beyond the mar margin of the disc and establish contact with the extra embryonic mesoderm as well in the cephalic direction they pass on each side of the precordal plate here the first diagram is the sagittal section through a 17th day old embryo the most cranial portion of the definitive notochord has formed while prenotochordal cells caudal to this region are intercalated into the endoderm as notochordal plate here you can see the black color one is the notochord here you can see the black color one is the notochord and the, you can see the ectoderm now and then here the brownish color one is the precordal mesoderm and here oropharyngeal membrane is there here cloacal membrane is there oropharyngeal membrane means the cranial direction in the cranial direction the oropharyngeal membrane is there in the caudal direction cloacal membrane is there so that's all about gastrulation process uh, from my next video you can learn about the neurulation process thank you for watching